Hello and welcome to another shop update here at the Woolly Thistle. I have lots to show you this time and we'll get right into it. Um, it's Friday, December 20th, so it's right before the holidays and I hope that you're having a good run up to the holidays and that all of your um, holiday shopping is hopefully done by now or is well under control. Let's not think about it if that's not the case. I certainly have one or two things still to do myself. I want to say thank you for watching this shop update and for subscribing to our YouTube channel. So just do that right below and then you're all set. You'll get notified when we have new episodes go up. I do tend to do this every other Friday. Um, I missed the last time because it was right after Black Friday and Small Business Saturday. And thank you very much if you shopped with us uh, over the sale. It was a great success. We were very busy and because of that I couldn't quite squeak in another shop update. Also, during the last shop update, I forgot to offer a prize and I like to offer a prize on every episode. So we still had some comments and I have a winner and this winner is going to win a $25 gift certificate to the Woolly Thistle. And the winner is Knit Takes Two. She says, thank you for the updates and for providing UK yarns that are hard to get in the US. I just love the Robin, Robin colorway. And that's Knits. Knit, take, knit takes two. So thank you very much for watching and for leaving a comment for that you are getting a $25 gift certificate to the Woolly Thistle. So thank you. Um, to claim that just send us an email with winner in the subject line and we will take care of that for you. So let's do a prize for this shop update before I forget. I think um, at this time of year, it's really good to receive gift certificates. So I'm gonna do another $25 gift certificate uh, to a lucky winner who is a commenter under this episode and also um, is subscribed to our YouTube channel. So um, please subscribe and please leave a comment. Your chances of winning are really good. I would also really appreciate it if you would tell a friend or share this on your social media so that uh, we can grow our audience for all the lovely stuff we have here at the Woolly Thistle and I appreciate your help with that. All right, so let's see. Yes, we had a small sale uh, since we last spoke, which was crazy busy and really fun. Uh, we all got right down to it here and we worked extra and we, we got everything out on time. So thank you very much for shopping with us. Thanksgiving seems like a completely distant memory at this point, of course, as we're looking towards Christmas and the holidays. So, uh, but we're all doing great here and I hope you are too. So be sure to sign up for the Woolly Thistles newsletter, which you can do right on the shop website. Uh, down at the very bottom, there's a little box, or in the menu, there's a newsletter um, uh, you know, item in the menu that you can just put your email address in, and then you will start receiving our monthly newsletter and maybe a few other things in between as well. I do try to give away um, a nice subscriber special to say thank you for for joining the newsletter so it's worth your while oh what am i wearing <laughs> yes i finished this this is the seaweed sweater or seaweed slipover i mean and it was in or is in shetland wool week uh, annual 2019. i fell in love with this as soon as i saw it i ordered in the yarn it's knitted in jameson spindrift i made a few kits as well and uh, they sold out but we are getting more in and um, I just became very monogamous on this and knitted this like crazy and I'm really happy with it I think uh, it's got a nice fit I know the horizontal lines but you know I'm a knitter and I want to I want to wear my knitting now what I need is a lovely tweed jacket to wear over this and be the country gentlewoman I think <laughs> but it's keeping me nice and warm and of course not too warm because my my arms are not covered um, and it's a very easy knit it really is it looks like there's a lot going on but remember every row only has two colors it's a traditional fair isle um, and there's even rest rows in between the motifs where you have just the single color and those feel great <laughs> but you know if you could knit a color work mitten then you could knit this garment first of all there's no shaping so it's straight up and down. You're not dealing with any shaping or anything like that. So if you were knitting a mitten, you'd be knitting a big tube straight up and you'd be dealing with thumb holes and things. With this, you start at the bottom and you just knit round and round. There's no shaping, like I said. When you get to the sleeves, 
you do a few decreases on either side and then you create your steek stitches. Now steek actually means bridge in, um, I don't know if it's English or if it's Shetland or Norwegian, I don't know where the word came from, but it means bridge. So then you create a few bridge stitches, the pattern tells you how many, it might be, I can't remember now, five or seven something like that. I think there was seven or maybe nine. And uh, you create those and you just knit across them in alternating colors. And you just keep going round and round. And then when you get to here, you create uh, your steek stitches here. So then you just, you're, you're constantly knitting round and round, but your circumference is getting smaller because you are decreasing here just a little bit, nothing special or fancy. Um, but then you're knitting across these stitches. And then, uh, then you finish off by just knitting straight up. There's no shaping here at all. And you're knitting across steek stitches here and here. And then you do a lovely three needle bind off to join the front and the back. And then you cut your stitches. Now, I didn't even reinforce this. This is what the inside looks like. There's no reinforcement because this is woolly wool, sticky Shetland wool. Um, and I felt very confident uh, doing it without any um, reinforcement because first of all, it's Shetland wool. And second of all, there's no sleeves. I'm not pulling on this, but even if I was, I think I'd be perfectly comfortable. So I, have, I maybe need to tidy things up a little bit, but that's all that's in there. There's no nothing doing anything it's just sitting there it really is just sitting there and it's quite happy and then I picked up stitches to do the uh, little arm bands and the neck band and voila so I'm very happy with this it's very comfortable it's very warm it's very me <laughs> and uh, yeah I hope you like it I hope that you are encouraged to maybe knit one for yourself um, it this probably took me something between four to six weeks to knit. I was very monogamous with it basically. I knit on this a lot and got it done but I find it completely addictive and very enjoyable. I do my color work with two fingers so the uh, dominant yarn in my left, the background yarn in my right and the way I remember this is um, when you say I'll be right back, right hand back. So back being the background stitches. That's how I remember it. So whenever I pick things up I know my background stitches go in my right hand. I have so many things to show you this episode. I'm really enjoying um, showing all my things and not necessarily from the shop. One of these is this brand new quilt that I got from Olivia who is This Handmade Life on Instagram. And she, she made this for me. She occasionally takes um, orders for quilts and she posts beautiful pictures on her Instagram. And I saw this and I thought, Oh, I really like that. She had made a previous one quite similar. And she does all the quilting as well. And uh, there's vintage um, fabric in here. So I just got this, gave it a wash, and I'm thrilled with it. Isn't it pretty? So that's Olivia, and she is This Handmade Life on Instagram. So I would check her out. So that was a recent acquisition. Another wonderful and very special acquisition uh, are these mittens. And this is from Code of Mittens, who is also on Instagram. And these are so perfect. Look at that point on the star on the thumb. These are Latvian mittens. So there are three colors in a row. You can see white, red, blue in one row. I've never tried it. These are tiny stitches. And they are absolutely perfect. So Code of Mittens has an Etsy shop. And I've loved her Instagram for a long time and they smell gorgeous and they're so soft. I was asked will I wear these? Um, probably not actually. <laughs> I feel at least for now they're too precious um, but here they are on. 
they're very comfortable they fit nicely but with rings and things and stranded color work I'm always a bit nervous and uh, these are beautiful I feel like I could have my own museum with these displayed yeah um, this book features um, wonderful pictures and diagrams of many Latvian mittens and they're all knitted in this style which is straight up not really differentiating for a cuff and then no gusset the thumb is right just in there and then the point and many of them have three colors in one one row which I actually think I'm ready to give a go I've heard it's a pain in the neck but I kind of I'm not too faced by pains in the neck I've got a high tolerance <laughs> for uh, for pins in the neck, especially when they result in such beautiful, beautiful uh, mittens. I don't know what yarn these were knitted with, but it's a very fine gauge. And sorry, I know I'm showing you a lot of this, but oh, just enjoy how lovely these are. And if you feel so inclined, visit her Etsy shop and definitely give her a follow on Instagram. So I'm very, very happy with these. And yes, I think I only have one of these left in stock. If you would like me to get more, I will. This book has sold well for us. And I just noticed when I was looking for it that in fact, we're very low. So I'd be happy to get more of these, but we do have this one. All right, let's see. Those are my acquisitions. Oh, and talking of mittens, I do want to just mention that our Mitten Cal will be our fifth year doing it. We'll be starting in February and or March, somewhere in there. We're working out all the details. We're working to make this a very special um, fifth anniversary celebration of the Woolly Thistles Mitten Cal. So um, keep an eye out for that and mark your calendars. We want full participation uh, because it really is a fun cal. It's the oldest cal that I've run and uh, Maggie will be helping me again and she is such a great uh, cheerleader for everybody who's knitting along. Now, the inspiration of this episode today is actually uh, from listening to Woolwork, which is Louise Scully's audio podcast, formerly known as Knit British. I'm sure you already know of Louise and, and listen to her. Her most recent episode, and I will put the episode number here, um, was about lots of things <laughs> but in there she had a beautiful brilliant interview that I thoroughly enjoyed with the author of this golden fleece uh, the author is Esther Rudder and she's a lovely young young mum who has been busy trotting up and down the British Isles collecting stories and history and information and doing her own knitting as she goes and really being on a very excellent journey that she writes about here very enjoyably and she's even more charming in real life uh, I was lucky enough to meet her a couple of summers ago but um, the interview with Louise I was just I was grinning I loved it so I want you to listen to it and I'll put a link in the show notes to it um, but in there um, while Louise is chatting away with her uh, she does mention that the wool exploration for I think 2020 will be starting out with Hebridean yarn and if you know Louise she does a lot of wool exploration where her listeners all knit with the same wool but sourced from wherever they want to get it and um, they knit up swatches and they do different tests with it and they really get to know that breed of yarn. Hebridean yarn is maybe well it's in my top three favorite yarns or wools um, and I uh, used to sell Berlin yarn here at the Woolly Thistle, sadly no longer, but you can still get it from Meg, uh, who is on the Hebrides, um, on the tiny island of Bernaray. And um, this, is, this is some of hers. This is called P.T. Brown, and this is what I have left of her Hebridean yarn. So yeah, this kind of got me going on a on a jag of dark brown yarn because I love Hebridean wool and um, I love dark brown and I can show you that I do because I've knitted a few things. So this is Berlin yarn from the Hebrides, Hebridean sheep, gorgeous. And from that in the four ply, I knitted this lovely hap. I'll put a link uh, to what it is 
down below. I actually forget right now the name of this, but it's a pattern by Blacker and it's a hap. And this was knitted in four ply and I'm totally blowing myself out. Um, this was such a joy to knit. I really enjoyed knitting this and it went very quickly for me. And I do wear this quite a bit. Um, oh, what's the name of it? I'm sure it begins with a B. Yeah, but this is a big, but my friend Amber knitted the same hap in using St. Kilda, which is a lace weight, and hers came out, out much smaller and more dainty <laughs> than my big, I'm going off to fight a war in the wind and the cold type thing. So yes, what's it called? Bell, Bell, I'll put it here, I can't remember. So that is that, and that, um, I just have to say, I have a very high tolerance for woolly wool. I don't find it itchy at all. I wear that up against my neck and it doesn't bother me one bit. But I think it goes without saying that um, the wools I'm about to talk about are not merino in any shape or form. So they're not super soft, but they're not super scratchy. Like, like I said, you know, I wear this up around my neck. You can definitely feel it. You know it's there. But I love it. Love it. All right. Uh, the other thing... I've knitted with Meg's uh, Berlin yarn. I knitted this in DK. And this is a vest. I love my vests. And it's a cabled vest. And this was actually inspired after I met Meg on her craft. She was wearing a sweater in this, but I converted it to a sleeveless vest. Um, and I really do enjoy this as well. This is in DK, so it's very, um, it's quite heavy. And uh, there you can see the, the cables. So that is a favorite piece for sure. So that's knitted in Berlin yarn, but let me show you some other dark wools. This here is Croft 29 that I got um, from Rachel. And they have an online, well, they have an Etsy shop. So you can find Croft 29 on Etsy. And of course you can find Berlin Yarns um, at her own website, Berlin Yarn. So this is Rachel. I would love to get this back in the shop sometime. And you can see there are little bits of hair, but quite different. Now, Rachel is on Skye, which is an inner Hebridean island. And Bernary is in the outer Hebrideans. Um, so they're quite close in proximity, but look how different, different. And that is the beauty of sheep and wool is that they are affected by their environment. And so depending on what these individual sheep, you know, eat and are exposed to weather-wise and all of that, their fleece will be different. And these are not that far apart in geography. So that's what I have for Hebridean, except I do have, and this is another one of my favorite. I'm out of stock of this right now, but um, this is from my personal stash. And this is Kama from Uist Wool. Again, on the Hebrides. So Hebridean yarn from the Hebrides. And to the best of my knowledge, there are no Hebridean sheep in the United States. And if I felt like doing yet another project, I would work on that. We have soy sheep and we have Shetland sheep, but no Hebridean sheep that I can find. If you know different, I would love, love, love to know. So this is Kama, and I hope to get more of this in from Uist. Um, and again, for comparison, because these are three different islands in the Hebrides, three different wolves. Now, related to Hebridean, uh, if only because of the color, is Black Welsh Mountain. And this is, again, from my personal stash, this is Tear from Uist Wools. And this is gorgeous, very squishy. This is their, let me see, their DK. Look at the size of that skin now. It's huge. So that's that. So that's Black Welsh Mountain. And I have just in 
Black Welsh Mountain from Armscott Manor. Uh, we have DK and Four Ply. Not very much though, if any left right now. I need to I need to check our stock and maybe uh, put in a reorder if we're really low. So Black Welsh Mountain, gorgeous. And you can just imagine these sheep roaming the old Welsh mountain sides. But these sheep live at Armscott Manor, which is a beautiful place in Warwickshire. Now, long, long, long time ago, I lived in Warwick and Leamington Spa, which is very close to where this yarn comes from. And they specialize in Portland wool, which is this white wool. And this is it in DK. They have a lovely label. And um, Portland is a rare breed. It's a conservation breed at risk. And they have been working uh, the last few years to try and have a positive impact on that breed and uh, by breeding it and creating uses for it as well. So they've been making this yarn at the Natural Fibre Company. And these sheep are so old. This breed is one of the oldest continuous breeds in the UK. are so old that they're mentioned in the Doomsday Book, which I always think is really amazing. And then... Um, they blend their Portland with a little bit of Black Welsh Mountain and come up with these two lovely greys, um, a dash and a splash of Black Welsh Mountain in their Portland. It's gorgeous, isn't it? These are both in four ply, I believe. Yeah. And then, so you get, you get the full range of cream, and by blending cream and brown, you tend to get, or black brown really, you tend to get this lovely gray. So there. This has been selling really well. Um, this is very special yarn from a very special um, place. And I'm very happy to be offering it to you. So yes, this is all my personal collection because I love, I love what they're doing. Also in the shop in dark brown is Jacob from River Knits. And uh, Jacob is a little sheep that comes in lots of colors. It's the multicolored sheep. So lots of browns, black, cream, they're patchy. I have a fleece at home that I'm supposedly processing, but I kind of run out of steam. So this is Jacob from River Knits. It's lovely, it's rustic for sure, as is all of this yarn. This might be even more rustic than the others but um, they'd make great mittens, I think. And then, of course, Jameson and Smith, we can't forget our Shetland wool. This is from the Heritage line, and here comes the sun. Sorry, it's gonna mess with my, my showing you. So this is uh, Shetland black, but it's a dark brown, of course. What else? Oh, and then Tuku wool right here. This is natural, dark brown. This is their color 05, Anga. And I love this. This is, this is as dark and chocolatey as the Hebridean. Yeah, so um, if like me, you like the natural and the darks, this is what we have available. <laughs> Here are the woolly thistle. I'm sure there's more that my hands can't pick up right now. So you have plenty of choice is what I'm trying to say. There's lots. And of course, these colors are all brown, but they all have a different texture and feel and fineness, you know, with uh, the Shetland wool being the finer of all of this, I think. So yeah. So let's have a quick shop update. This is gonna be a quick one. I feel like I'm rushing to get through this before the sun destroys the lighting which I hope is okay right now so I've shown you these all before but uh, we just got our restock back in and this is uh, lacquer's Gotland yarn in eight colors this is lightning my favorite is the natural gray this is undyed put it over here this is mist this is Downpour, which is a blue. And there is a second blue called Shower. Here they are together so you can see them. One is more tealy, one is more blue, 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 and more teal. 
we have two pinks and dusk and dawn so this one's dawn this one's dusk Ginny SR who is Virginia Settler Reimer recently like last week put out um, a mitten pattern I'll put a picture up here uh, that is just gorgeous and is made from black or Gotland yarn and it's called 36 North um, this is their hoar frost and this is fog which is gorgeous so I believe Ginny's pattern is for dawn and mist these two together but I think this is also a really pretty combination or mm, that is really nice or either of the blues uh, not with the orange blue with the gray or with the green yeah so lots of combinations there if that is something that interests you so we do have that in stock it is selling quickly I won't lie um, if I can get more I will but um, I don't know what their stocks are like I know this is one of their rarer um, breeds that that they spend a lot of time it's been a couple of years collecting enough fleece to make a good run okay so let me tell you quickly that we've changed our shipping policy until the end of the year so instead of uh, having to buy $120 to get free shipping you now only need to spend $99 which is a great deal for you I think so uh, take advantage of that if that um, interests you um, I've told you about Armscott Manor which is the Portland wool so this is new in the shop and is selling out pretty fast I will try to get more of this but I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't wait too long or you'll be waiting for that to come. And also from Black, I received more uh, St. Kilda, which is gorgeous. That's the lace weight. And Lioness, we've got some DK and some four ply. We got what they could give us. Um, the stocks of that are getting low. If you're interested in Black or Swan, uh, that is gonna be milled up real soon and we'll get that as soon as it's available. Now, look at that box. There are let me see. Ooh. This is a departure for the Wooly Thistle. I want to say there's something like 86 colors in here. This is a departure for the Wooly Thistle because it is merino with nylon, but I couldn't resist. This thing is amazing. And I have them on sale right now. And here, look at this. I mean, this isn't all of them. This is just some of them. Oops, and I knew that was going to happen. This is such a happy, happy basket. And you could make all kinds of things. You could crochet a blanket. You could knit scrappy socks because there's nylon in here. You know, they'll be good. Um, but yeah, bit of a departure, but we all know, and I've said this openly before, that I do like dessert with my meat and potatoes. And I consider this the dessert uh, of the meal of all the wool that I love. It's okay. <laughs> so if you feel like me, this might be just the jag you need where um, you get that merino nylon fix in all the colors. So this is normally $165 for all of this, but it's on sale right now. Talking of sales, there is a little sale happening in the shop. You can look at the main menu and at the very end there's sale and this is going on till the end of the year or while stocks last. It's a little year-end thing that I'm doing. Many of you are taking advantage of buying up Katie Greenbean's lovely uh, holiday cards. I got them a little too late to really um, sell them in the shop for this year. So I've put them on sale and uh, you can get a head start on next year with those. Also in there is West Yorkshire Spinners Robin for a little while. I'm just giving you a little treat and, uh, and uh, sweetening the deal for you by putting them on sale for a little while. And uh, the Sheep G's. I don't know how you say that, but it's a company from Holland, so, um, but uh, very different from what I usually stock. So that's that, check it out. I wanted to let you know we just have a few of these left. This is Hannah Longmuir's 2020 calendar, um, and it, it includes a lot of her drawings. She is an artist who draws the hedgerows and fields and trees around her home which is on the Scottish border. So I'm very happy to have these. Also from her are these tiny little notelets, perfect for writing thank you notes. And you can see there's a selection of uh, pictures in there. Very beautiful. So we have some of these left, they're blank inside. 
And my brainwave for John Arban, should have done this a long time ago, are these uh, gradient sets from light to dark. So um, six skeins right now are going for the price of five. And you get whatever color you choose, you get light through to dark, which makes a beautiful gradient set, doesn't it? And it's on, it's on sale, it's a good deal. Um, okay, let's talk about Marie Wallen. Uh, she launched her gentle book, which we had here and we got out right away. I have my next batch here and it'll be in the shop um, by the time you're watching this, hopefully on Friday. Uh, we are just waiting for the rest of our yarn to come in. We have a huge yarn order coming with all the colors. And once we have that, uh, you will be able to purchase your yarn and maybe a kit. I've made two kits so far and if you have strong feelings about wanting a kit in any of these, let me know. I've obviously done Primrose, which is the cover because it's so beautiful. So there's a kit for that and I've done the Mistletoe Tam from here, which is on page... So there are yarn sets ready to go as soon as we get all the yarn in for that that we need. Um, if you would like a yarn set made up in another pattern, I'm happy to do that. Let me know which ones you would like. The book itself is very pretty, full of wonderful, wonderful patterns, pretty pictures, lovely location. I love this. I love quite a lot in here, actually. Oh, there's, there's some pictures of the hat. Isn't that pretty? She's also got some non-color work in there. That's a twisted stitch textured piece called Ivy. This might be my favorite. This is called Bramble. And look at the sleeves. They're different from the body. Yeah. That floats my boat. <laughs> Here's some more pictures of it. Right, so we have Gentle going in stock on Friday. You should be able to get that. Uh, we also have Meadow, Wildwood, Shetland. Her little square books that we're out of stock of are coming back as well. So we're getting a big shipment in and that should all be in the shop on Friday. If it's not in the shop on Friday, then we will get it in as soon as possible. Um, it's on its way now and as far as I know, tracking is all good for now and it's scheduled to, to be here in time for Friday. So I think that's everything I have for you this time. I'm not sure if this was a fast episode or if I've uh, babbled on a lot. Um, yeah, but I think that's everything I have for this time. And I will be talking to you through the audio podcast on Friday the 27th after the, after the Christmas break. And um, I think then, yeah, the audio will be the last uh, podcast or episode that I put out this year. And... Then we'll be into 2020 and I think 2020 is going to be amazing. I'm really excited and looking forward to it, but I am trying to just relax and enjoy what's left of 2019 and enjoy some downtime. I plan to take some time off work, spend time with my kids who'll be home from school. I want to read, I want to eat chocolate and put my feet up and um, get out in the snow. We had a snowstorm yesterday, so uh, the snow has arrived just in time and hopefully there's more on the way so that we have a white Christmas, which we usually do and should have. So yeah, we'll be out hoofing around in the snow. So I hope that you have a wonderful uh, couple of weeks till I see you here again. Please subscribe, please leave a comment below and you'll be in the running for a $25 gift certificate to the Woolly Thistle. Share this episode or this podcast with a friend uh, let them know about the woolly thistle. I really want to uh, spread the awareness of the shop out there so that people who are looking for these special yarns, they, that they can find me and know that I'm here doing this. Uh, thank you very much for all your support throughout the year and um, we'll be talking to you again soon. And remember, if you go out, take your knitting. Bye-bye.